Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to discuss what is dependency injection. So if you watch some of my previous videos you may have saw code that looks like this. But what actually is going on here? Well this is actually us using dependency injection within our view model. So in our upcoming videos we're actually going to be using dependency injection to help us write our tests. But what exactly is it? Well, it's exactly what the name implies. It's essentially a way for when an object or a function depends on another object for a piece of functionality. So where's an example of this within our project at you know, this exact moment? Well, there's actually a few examples of where we actually need a few objects that we depend on. So if we actually just switch if we actually just quickly just switch back to our project. So if you actually look at our project here, you'll notice a few things. So we actually do depend on two objects for two pieces of functionality. So the first one is our validator here and also as well our network manager as well. So our validator is what we use to help us validate our person and our network manager is what we use to actually request, you know, data from some kind of service. So these are actually two objects that we need in order to perform these actions. So what we actually want to do is use dependency injection so that when we write our tests, we can almost like fake using either one of these tools to see if our flows work correctly. So going back to our presentation, so what are the actual benefits and why would you even want to do, you know, dependency injection in the first place? So the first reason why is for separation of concerns. So by us not lumping all of our code into one file, we're actually able to separate out our business logic to not have overwhelming files. The next one is reusability. So since we're actually separating out our business logic, we're able to easily reuse the code. And a good example of this is our network manager. We actually don't need to repeat our networking code every single time. We just simply just reuse it and it's easier to test. Since we break up our business logic, it's easier to unit test and we can easily write tests for individual bits of our application. So the next set of upcoming videos, we're actually going to look at using protocols. And these protocols are going to help us actually achieve our goals in terms of, you know, implementing dependency injection with our objects. So before we actually just end this video, we just want to briefly touch on what is a protocol. Well, protocols actually help us define the blueprint of methods and properties that we can be used by a class or another type. So you may be wondering, when does this actually come into play with unit testing and dependency injection? Well, when we actually write our integration test, we need to inject our dependencies. So when we actually write our unit test, we're actually going to need to actually inject our dependencies. So going back to our create view model example, we're actually going to need to inject via the initializer or maybe even via the function, the validator and our networking manager because we want to provide it with a version that allows us to easily test. Now, the reason why we're doing this as well is because we actually don't want to test our networking manager against a real service. So why don't we want to actually do this? Well, one of the main reasons why we don't want to test it against a real service is because if our API goes down, then so do all of our tests. So when you're writing your tests, you want to keep that in mind that you don't actually want to test it against a real API. You want to use a fake service class. And that's actually something that we're going to implement within this take home test course. The concept that we're going to be using is stubbing and we're also going to be using mocks as well to help us validate our flows. So in the next video, we're actually going to go into what is a mock and what is a stub, the differences between them and why we use them when we're writing our tests. So if you enjoyed this breakdown in this video, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you have, also as well, if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.